All right, everyone, so for our first day of SEO, I'm going to take a step back before we get hands-on. I'm going to talk about examples, because as I said, I teach this stuff, but I also do it for a living. I'm part of a company that we do all of this for real clients. So let me show you some real clients. Uh, I'll show you, first of all, the, the our, our big full-featured client, the one that basically has hired us to do everything uh, for them, which is make them a website, run their social media, all of that stuff. So if you'd like to check this out as well, you can open your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. You can go to this address right here. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's aquiestexcoco.com. A-Q-U-I-E-S-T-E-X-C-O-C-O.com. Aquiestexcoco. We'll check out this client briefly. The reason I'm showing this is not to show off, but to show you that these are the things that one would need to do to fully optimize their online presence to be found on the search engines, to be featured on television, to be to gain internet fame, to translate it into whatever you're trying to do. Trying to get more traffic, trying to sell tacos, trying to uh, gain um, exposure for your art, whatever you're trying to do. So let's take a quick look at the site, aquiestexcoco.com, if you'd like, or just follow along. The site is a WordPress-powered site. The technology that is used to build the site is WordPress. There's many kinds of software out there to create a website. WordPress is one of the big ones. It's got about 25% global market share. So of the billions of websites in the world, or hundreds of millions, whatever, the, the majority of them, 25%, are built in WordPress. So if you're thinking about making a website soon, I would highly recommend to go the WordPress route. If you've already got a website and it works for you, great, it works for you. Um, I'm not saying change the, the technology of your website, but if you're thinking of updating your website to something else or starting a website, WordPress is what I would recommend. Yes? WordPress.com I'll mention that in detail a little bit later, but the short answer, WordPress.org. Um, so this is a website of a restaurant. They, uh, I'm sorry to make you hungry, but this is um, one of our clients. It's a Mexican food restaurant, traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. So the purpose of the website is, yes, to make you hungry, to update you on the, the website, uh, the, the, the restaurant and such, uh, and to make you hungry, but then look at the top right. Order online book a table. So the website has a goal. You might have heard, why don't you have a website yet? Let's see, you're 2016. Where's your website? You haven't updated your website. And yes, it's important to have a website, but why do you have a website? That's one of the big things to ask yourself. Why do I need a website? Why do I have a website? Is it doing what I need it to do? So don't just rush out and make a website without a plan, without a goal. And I'm going to have handouts for you and such to think about that in a moment. But the goal of the website is to entice you to buy the food or book a table. So every website basically needs a goal. At the top right, I've also got here social media. I've got these links that go out to... What is this here? Uh, what's this one here? YouTube. What's this one here? What's this one here? Instagram, etc. These are not all the possible social networks, of course, and we could add more because the the client is on more social media sites. At a certain point, it looks like a big jumble of icons, perhaps, so that's one reason why we might not add every icon. But the point is, there's also a social media presence. Not just the website, but activity on Twitter, activity on Facebook, Google+, Vine, Snapchat, etc., etc., etc. There's a lot of social networks out there. And nowadays, the minimum thing is to have a website. The better thing would be to have a website and social media. Because social media is a form of marketing. Um, if you don't use social media for business, you might think, yeah, social media, Twitter, YouTube, that's the place where people share funny cat pictures and funny cat videos and funny cat stories and other stuff not related to cats. But fun stuff. Yes, social media is about fun and frivolity, 
but on the other side of that coin is also it's a marketing tool it's advertising it's a way to reach an audience because let's say I always give the example that you go to your mailbox you know your real mailbox at your at your house and you open up the mailbox and then there's those advertisements let's say the Bed Bath & Beyond coupon that we all get 20% off if you're lucky five dollars off and I get that coupon in the mail my mom gets that coupon in the mail usually what I do is put it right in the recycle bin not interested but my mom brings the brings that coupon to the house and eventually uses it so Bed Bath & Beyond spent some amount of money thousands of dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that coupon to my doorstep and my mom's doorstep and I threw it away my mom used it return on investment they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and my mom spent that 20 percent plus another hundred dollars so a good return on investment for them for my mom bad return on investment for me I threw it away but it costs real money even if I used it or not social media can be that coupon that marketing that advertising to reach an audience that really cares about your product your followers in theory follow you because they care about what your company is about so you've got a captive audience I teach another class on social media I have to look up when it is I think it's this week but I teach a class on social media to learn this stuff social media for business so I'll mention it later but I do recommend to take as many of my classes as possible because they all interlink they're all free they all interlink they're all related some concepts bleed into another course but some concepts require the full course so this client has hundreds of followers, thousands of views, lots of traffic on their social media as well as on the website. In the goal of come buy this taco, come book a table, have us cater your event, whatever you are trying to accomplish online. The website also has down here a blog, the latest updates. This blog blogs can serve many purposes but one of the secrets of SEO that I'm going to tell you right now is blogging if you don't have a blog you could be hurting yourself SEO wise because again the minimum used to be you need a website well if everyone's doing the minimum now we need a new minimum the new minimum is blogging that's what's the next step so we'll be talking about blogging but I have a class all about blogging why would a restaurant need a blog? Let's check here. Under the blog, there's these articles about being at the Taste LA event, a really big event with a lot of restaurants and chefs showing off their wares. I didn't know about that. Let me look for the Taste LA 2016. Okay, a little advertising there. We've got uh, this article about being, being rated by Zagat. If you're, not, if you're not in the restaurant business, perhaps you don't know, but Zagat is a big deal. They've been around since the 70s, rating the restaurants throughout the U.S. <clears throat> and um, this client recently got rated. It, it, it's a pretty much an honor to be rated by Zagat. They don't give ratings to everyone. That's that article there. Who's visited the restaurant? Chefs, celebrities, etc. Okay, great. A lot of um, tooting our own horn. Sure. But if you go to the next page, here's an article. Here's a blog post. Pulque, drink of the Aztec gods. How many of you have heard of pulque? before. One person. Pulque is an alcoholic beverage made of the maguey leaf, the maguey plant, which looks a lot like agave. What does agave graduate to? Tequila. Tequila. Pulque comes from the maguey plant. The maguey plant is one of the seasonings that's in this food. So this blog then, this blog post, is educating on the food and beverages of the restaurant. Um, it's creating, the purpose of the blog is to create content. The more content you have online, the more the search engines can find of you. If you're only, no, if you've only got a website, then the search engines only have that one thing to know about you. But if you're also blogging and putting out articles and such on a regular basis, that's more for the search engines to find about you, to know about you. So when someone searches, what are, what are local craft beers in San Diego? There's an article here about that. 
on this website that could drive traffic to the website. When someone is searching for what are the top 100 restaurants in Los Angeles? There's one here about being ranked in the top 100 restaurants in Los Angeles. So the more content that you put out there when people search, the more possibility that you can be found on the search engines, on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo, on AOL search, whatever, wherever people search. So in a nutshell, that's why blogging is important. If you take the other class, we'll talk about more details of blogging. And so the, those are the big ideas I wanted to mention about this client, also the design of it. Um, you want to look contemporary to what are your contemporaries, what are your competitors, what are what are the other restaurants doing, what are the other realtors doing, what are the other dog walkers doing, because you may think, I've got this business, I'm going to be famous for my business, I'm going to make money from my business, but so is everyone else saying the same thing. So is every other realtor, web designer, restaurant, uh, dog walker, vegan bakery. So you need to see what the competition is doing, and we have an activity on that too, uh, competitor analysis. So it's a big concept of SEO. SEM, it's all, it's all tied together. It's a long-term proposition. Um, because if I were to, we'll do a deeper activity a little bit later, but if I were to do a, a search, Mexican food. You don't have to do this. Let me just show you. If I do Mexican food, 254 million results. <laughs> So this Mexican food restaurant needs to be found. How can I get found with this search? That's what the point of this class is. How am I going to stand out from the quarter of a billion results just in San Diego? That's what the concept is of this class. In the time that we have here to talk about things from every angle. Because modern SEO is complicated. Again, it might not be hard, but it's complicated. There's a lot of things to think about and a lot of things to do. So because it might be complicated, it might have a lot of steps and such, let me ask you this. Um, uh, SEO and SEM uh, can be done the easy way or the hard way. Raise your hand if you want to do it the easy way. Okay, great. Take your hand, reach into your wallet, take out your credit card, and that's the easy way. To pay, <laughs> to rank quickly and easily, that's the easy way. To pay for placement and such. I'm not going to talk about that very much. I'm going to talk about the hard way. I'm going to talk about the way that is in, the, in it for the long term. Because paying can get you to the top very quickly. And let's say you pay just any number. I'm going to pay $100, let's say. And I'm going to be number one. Great. I'm going to get lots of traffic from that. Well, then my competitor, Las Cuatro Mipas, pays $105. Now they're number one. OK, I'll pay $120. Now I'm number one. Then La Porta pays $300. So now it's an arms race to be number one, a monetary arms race. So pay per click, paying for pace, placement and such is viable, is valuable, it works, but is it in your budget? And there is something to say for that. We do engage in that. My company does the paid aspect of SEO. And it works, but we also engage in a lot of organic SEO. And that's what I'm going to teach in this class, organic SEO. How to do it for the long term, which will be more complicated, but not difficult, necessarily. It just takes more effort, more time, and you'll be able to rank well also. But it does take more effort. That's what we're talking about in this class, organic SEO. There's organic SEO and there's PPC, pay-per-click, which is that you're paying. Again, I'll mention it a little later, but how much am I going to pay to be number one, number two, or on the first page? Maybe it's going to be very important to be very, very expensive to be number one, but as long as I'm on the first page, perhaps that'll work for me. Um, so, show of hands, how many of you hang out on the third page of results when you search? 
Very few of you. How many of you go to the second page of results? A few more. How many of you assume that the first page of results is the best and you find what you're looking for? More people. That's what the general population is. You yourself may have fun going to page 8, but most of the population of web users is going to assume page 1 is the best result. Yes, I have a quarter of a billion results, but I only need 10. <laughs> So, we'll see the challenges of getting ranked in this 10 because of the competition. We'll see that what we need to do is engage in SEO, which is basically what we do on our website. And we'll need to engage in SEM, which is basically what we do outside of our website. There's many nuances to that answer, of course, but SEO, if you want a, a quick takeaway, SEO is what you do on your website, SEM is what you do outside your website. Because this account, this client is also active on Twitter, 720 followers, a um, bunch of pictures and retweets and, and comments and such, videos, all of that stuff, so it's what you do outside of your site as well. And nowadays, modern SEO requires that, requires that you um, engage in both. Because oftentimes you'll see tutorials online or video tutorials or sometimes take classes where they really focus very narrowly about talking about your keywords, the end. That's not the end. There's a lot of things to talk about SEO. So that's why in our four weeks we're going to be covering a lot. We can't cover every single thing in detail. That's why there's a class focused on blogging, a class focused on, S on social media, a class focusing on making your website in WordPress. Let's... Um, oh, uh, and I have other clients, but um, you can check out the clients yourself over on our website. Uh, the company website, our company website is pmdinteractive.com. You can look at that yourself later. Uh, there's other clients that we, again, we practice what we preach. We, we do this website, we do the social media, photography, all of that. Um, you can look at that yourself on your own later. The structure of the class will be that I'm going to do some lecture, so we're, then we're going to do hands-on activities. We're going to do a hands-on activity right after the break in a moment. But I also need to say, the structure of the class is that um, there's, no, uh, there's no homework assignments, there's no big final test at the end of the course, there's no certificate that you get out of it. It's basically what you get out of it, what you need. Right? If you've got an online presence, you need to get found. That's much better than getting a certificate <coughs> or an A plus or whatever. So there's no grades in my classes, in the classes that I teach here. It's what you get out of it. So I'm going to be giving you um, activities and handouts and such, but you don't need to turn them in for a grade. I can look at them and give you comments and such if you'd like, but there's nothing to turn in. If you're interested in a much deeper course also, I also teach at Southwestern College. Let me briefly mention this. SWCCD.edu. This is a two-year college where we have classes for credit, for units, for grades and certificates and such. And so starting next month, I'm about to teach a 16-week course on the concepts of web design, social media, SEO, all of that stuff wrapped together in one big class where you can learn much more in depth. The catch is that it's at Southwestern College in Chula Vista and that it is a paid class. I don't remember how much it costs. The units, I believe, are about $35 a unit. And I think it's a two-unit class, so it's about $60, something like that. These classes here are obviously free. But uh, if you're interested, you can browse Southwestern College's catalog. And the specific class that I'm talking about is called CIS 255. It starts next month. There's still some space. If you need much more e detailed info about all of these concepts, 
you can enroll and if you're interested contact me through email or in person I'll tell you more details about the class but basically CIS 255 Wednesday nights 6.45 p.m. to 8.35 p.m. Uh, once a week online and classroom meetings two units it's about sixty to eighty dollars or so to take it which is still very affordable if you go over to UCSD extension that's like two thousand mm dollars -hmm. you learn the same sort of thing that's a little bit of side advertising there let's take a let's take our first break I'll turn the printer back on if you want to get a copy of the syllabus uh, we're gonna take a break for about ten minutes